What's going on, everybody? This is Dave from Post Rock Promo. I'm here with Traps from uh, Kent, England. How's it going, guys? Good. Thank you, man. Yeah, how are you? I'm doing good. Appreciate you guys asking. Appreciate you coming on and chatting up a little bit. Let's dive right into it. So when and how did you guys form? Um, so we in a, another band called Ohms. We were in a band. We were in that band for about, I think, three or four years. Um, and basically... Four years, I think. Yeah, and then basically, uh, Cheney's the bassist, I'm the drummer of Ohms. We kind of wanted to branch out and do something a little bit more, a bit more challenging and um, less restricting. So um, we started Traps on the grounds that, that it would be just an amalgamation of all the different types of music that we'd like to play that we can't play in the already established band Ohms. Um, yeah, so that's how we how we came together. I think initially we were a, we were a four piece um but then over time two about two members left and we've kind of we've evolved um i think in a good way of just becoming a two piece um and yeah i think we're we're pretty pretty happy where we are at the moment yeah i think like the best thing that happened is becoming a two piece because even the people that have like come to see us um since we started gigging recently they they've, they've complimented how we've changed since becoming a two piece and we've some We've got heavier and uh, apparently less flowery or, you know, that sort of like thing that people apparently didn't like about us before. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So you guys released Comer last April. How's the response been? <laughs> <laughs> right, actually, yeah. we've, we've released a, like uh, in the space of four months. No, no, in the space of six months, we released four recordings or something. So, um yeah it was purely because of lockdown so we we started our first release was a split with a local band called a riser um and then we followed that up with uh, an ep called the fighter which was all four of us uh once those two guys had left um we recorded a kind of really ambient off kilter noise album called brain we which is where the track comer comes from um and that was no, that was a strange time when we when we recorded that. I think it was just when um, COVID hit the UK and lockdown happened, so we couldn't have band practices, we couldn't do any of that, and so so brain we was a thing that we'd meet up every now and then and, and record some sort of noise tracks. Um, and Cheney sort of put it all together and made this colossal was it hour long, hour and a half long? Yeah, it's like an hour and like ten minutes or an hour and seventeen minutes. It's yeah, the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah, and it's weird that it's like our first full-length album sounds nothing like us. <laughs> it's, it's ballsy as hell. <laughs> Who did you guys record it with and how was the process? Uh, I recorded it on my laptop. Majority of it, I think we recorded a little bit on Max's computer, but uh, it was every track was completely, um, completely different. Like some of the songs we would record parts for different songs and then I thought oh we'll just stick them together for one song and they just happen to work and then sometimes I would have a complete idea write things in parts as if it was a normal song but it, it was a the whole album was very experimental like never done anything like that before so like one um one kind of influence for that sort of direction um that Cheney brought to the table was the band Melvins where um they've got a huge kind of they've got a huge back catalogue of of, um, of of albums but every album is is fairly different to the other they'd have like a concept where for example one album's like we're just going to play clean or for one album is like we're just going to do noise and stuff and that kind of really influenced us inspired us to to kind of branch out our own sound and just trying to go to kind of all four corners of of uh what we really want to do we've not really we've never restricted ourselves just to kind of one particular sound um which drives our management crazy like, because <laughs> we don't have like one sound it's every album sounds like almost like a different band which was when we started the band we wanted to record one album split up start a new band a completely different style mm. but we've just decided to do all of this under the name traps but yeah our management definitely drives them crazy yeah that's funny so how's the scene there do you guys have a favorite local band up here venue 
Um, in the end, it's not, there's not too much of a scene. Well, we've sort of started our own scene, but it's more mixed with Brighton, which is neighbouring to Kent. Um, there's like bands like Sander Carwin, who are from Kent. I can't think of anyone else specifically from here. I think when, um, yeah, when we started, uh, because with uh, Kent, especially where we're from, there's there's not much going for us really. There's like two venues that that put on kind of fairly eclectic bands, kind of out there bands and everything. But apart from that, it's your standards kind of metal bands or like indie rock band or covers bands, and we just kind of don't really fit in any of those. So A lot when of we tribute start, bands around. Yeah, here. lots of tribute bands, lots of bands that's just like we're doing it just so we can get paid and then we can go. Um, but we, so we played a, a gig in Brighton um, when we sort of first started out and there was the, the um, event booking agent uh, called Half Melted Brain really, really liked us. Um, and then they started their own record label uh, called Half Melted Brain Records. And we were the first bands to be signed on it. Um, but then since then, other bands from nearby us um, started joining it and came onto the label. And then out of nowhere, we had this kind of, we had this group of not similar sounding bands, but bands that are definitely on the fringe of the genre that they're, they're encapsulating. Um, and I think from there, we've, we've started to kind of find our place slowly, but surely we've, we've started to find a bit of a community. Um, but yeah, as far as Kent goes geographically, it's, it's, it's pretty dormant really to be honest i, I guess because like with kent we're we're really close to london so any kind of big bands or any kind of big scenes or communities are usually london based like all the cool stuff happens in london um yeah very cool so who are your biggest influences um well, i mean we both have um similar influences but i guess when we started this band for me personally as i wanted to do something like lightning bolt but in a um, slightly more mathy way um i guess i don't know max what, what other bands but i suppose daughters that's another like lightning bolt and daughters isn't it? <laughs> yeah daughters uh the locust um for me personally, uh, Battles was, I think, a big influence. Even though we, we don't sound anything like Battles, the, um, John Stanier as a drummer is a big influence for me and stuff. I really like the kind of sound of, of, of big drums that are fairly sort of technical, but not metal. You know, something that sounds kind of heavy, but not, but not too metal or angry or anything. Um, yeah, I think it's just a combination of those, really, those mm. four bands very drum influenced like we definitely wanted all, all, all the songs the big thing that we focus on at band practice is the drums are over the top when we i know in our other band it's no one knows who max is in the our other band so this band it's kind of like the drums have got to be at the front everything even if i'm playing a simple guitar riff the drums have to be complicated yeah. so bands like lightning bolt battles Melvin's, Locus, it's always the drummers, the ones that you talk about. So that was a very big part of forming traps was the drums have to take focus. And I think, um, I think visually, I guess we're, we're most similar to Lightning Bolt, not just because we're a two piece, but also because I try and be at the front of the stage. I, I try my best to bring my own drum kit, which Cheney decorated with like, um, with like uh, comic strips all over the kit. So visually, we try and be as colourful as and exciting, and we try and play off stage. And um, I've just started wearing a gas mask with a with a microphone attached to it and stuff. And I think, yeah, we're really going for that kind of visual aspect, I guess, of Lightning Bolt. But um, yeah, musically, just a combination of all of those, like Locust, Night, Lightning Bolt, Daughters, uh, Battles. Yeah, that's awesome. So if you guys could tour with one of those bands, which one? Oh man. Mm. I guess Lightning Bolt, to be honest. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, the, the Lightning Bolt would be cool. I think we're a little bit too normal for Lightning Bolt. Our songs are a bit more song structured in comparison. Our songs are a bit more accessible. <laughs> yeah. we, we do have singing and harmonies in us, but yeah. similar big riffs. 
very bassy. I have like two octave pedals to go through to different amps. So even though I'm playing guitar for this band, it sounds similar to bass. But it's very much like where where there's only two of us. So it's kind of very simplified, uh, like layout and arrangement. But the power that you can get out of those two channels um, is kind of what we aim for. So the, the guitars have to be as kind of big and loud and full. So Cheney goes through um, a Digitech whammy. So you've got loads of different kind of overtones, loads of different chords just from one guitar. As he says, he goes through a bass amp as well. So we try and kind of get the most out of just a two piece, which I think Lightning Bolt does pretty well as well. Mm. Um, yeah, so I'd say Lightning Bolt, definitely. I think we Yeah, that's probably the biggest there. influence, I suppose, would be Lightning Bolt. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's awesome. So now I'm going to ask you guys some non music questions. It's a good way for me to get to know you. This is for the other bands that I interview. Are you ready? <laughs> sure, <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> All right, first one best vacation you guys have been on? Uh, Cheney, do you want me to take this? Because you, you yeah, I, <laughs> I, I hate holidays. You gotta think a little bit. Yeah, yeah go on. I could be a tour or something. Um, um, well, I've I've been to I've been to Disney World twice uh, with my ex in the past like five years, and I've never been before. I was really skeptical going, but as soon as I turned up in Disney World, Florida, I really liked it. I've had the best time. Like it was. You know, you turn up and you just get sucked in. You don't even think about, you know, the, the kind of corporate greed or the exploitation around you. <laughs> you just channeled into Main Street <laughs> in 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 uh, in the Magic Kingdom and you just get really sucked into it. And it's just, yeah, it's pure joy. I hate to say I hate myself for saying that, but it was it was the best, best holiday I've ever been on. Hands down. <laughs> Cheney's just staring at me. Um, yeah, it, it, I'd have to say one of the tours we've done because that's the closest thing I do to holidays. That counts. Yeah. So. Oh, I hadn't thought of that actually. Yeah, I change. I want to change my answer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, tour. Okay, best tour I'd say is uh, is with a band called Slab Dragger, where we were we were fairly young as a band. And, this is uh, when we was we were playing in Ohms at the time. Yeah, so sorry, yeah, yeah. So this was a with, with Ohms where we toured the Slab Dragon. We did like eight dates across the UK and it was like the perfect kind of tour where it just got really messy. We got to become really good mates with the with the band that we we're touring with and stuff. And yeah, lots of like memorable moments came from, from that tour. Um yeah, I'd say that's I'd say that's the best tour we've done. Yeah, I'd probably say the same, actually. That was a very, very fun tour. I mean, there's tours when I was younger as a kid where they weren't as successful, but because it was new and I'd never done that sort of thing before, they were also quite enjoyable. Mm. Very cool. So if you guys could be fluent in another language, what language? Uh, Icelandic. Or sign language, actually. I've been thinking about um, learning sign language recently just because it seems like a really cool skill to have. It's a dying language. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody needs to keep the, keep the tradition alive. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, probably Japanese, I'd say. I learned a bit of Japanese at school, but um, I think like... You, know you went to Canterbury. You what? <laughs> You can tell you went to Canterbury learning Japanese. <laughs> yeah, I definitely went to a posh. We grammar. barely learned French at mine. Yeah. No, I think you like say phonetic. something in Japanese. Oh man. Um, <laughs> nope, not happening. No, I'm too. <laughs> That'd be uh, really cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, if you guys would go back in time and talk to one world leader or person of influence, who would it be? Cheney, I reckon you've got a more educated answer than I have for this. This is right up your alley. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's quite a hard one actually. Because uh, as soon as you said back in time, I, I, I assumed it was going to be talking music. But now, if it's going to be someone who's influential, I guess it. No, I guess it can be somebody. You can go with a, a dead musician. Uh, say, I don't yeah. know, but then you've just opened the floor to a, such a possible, more possible, <laughs> way, a better, better answer. I'd uh, say Bruce. I'd say Bruce Lee. Um, 
Oh yeah, that'd be amazing to see Bruce speak to Bruce. Lee. I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to hang out with him in like the last eight months of his life, mm. where, um, where Cheney actually posted to me um, the revelation of some very recent letters that have just been auctioned off, um, finding out that uh, Bruce Lee was was a massive cokehead, and he uh, he bought loads of coke off Bob Baker in the last eight years. Uh, last eight months of his life um and i'd be so curious to see what his kind of like training regime and what his mindset was in those yeah last i would love to go train with bruce lee that would be amazing especially on coke imagine that <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if i want to imagine <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah bruce lee final answer <laughs> Yeah, actually, yeah, I was gonna. I was, yeah, that, now, now you, now you said Bruce Lee, and but he was, he's had, you know, he changed the world, like especially for a, Asian people in Hollywood, and definitely, he's, yeah, he absolutely. was a very, very influential person. Yeah, I, I, I'd love to speak to Bruce Lee. Crazy, right? Crazy to think that like one of the most kind of um, one of the biggest icons in like physical fitness, one of the most kind of you know everyone saw him at his kind of physical peak um was just taking drugs for like <laughs> performance enhancers like in his last eight months mm. um crazy but yeah i'd love to have been there <laughs> is that your answer too cheney oh, no, yeah yeah like uh 100 bruce lee I, i'm almost gutted that i didn't say it before max <laughs> like, growing up as a kid especially like my dad like he's all like bruce lee you've got to love bruce lee so that, he's, he was a very uh very big inspiration on uh yeah, totally. on my family growing up as a small child so yeah either either him or hulk hogan i was never really a hulk hogan fan you can have him i'll, I'll stick with bruce lee i love i love hulk hogan you love bruce lee okay yeah <laughs> very cool brother <laughs> hey nice <laughs> I know that was a terrible impersonation. <laughs> it's, it's better than ours because you're yeah, it's better than our English versions. <laughs> All right, guys. Last question: What are some places in Kent that visitors should check out? Elsewhere um, in Margate. Yes. Is, yeah. That, that's our similar to what you asked earlier. Um, that's kind of our main base. So then you, it's a walkable distance from my house. Actually, um, it's called Elsewhere. And it's the only cool alternative place that we really have, like specifically for our, you know, alternative music. Well, they uh, they won't let just any old bands play. So it's it's definitely like a a beacon for bands it's like a, us. Yeah, it's a good hub. It's a good kind of social hub. And as a as a sort of band, not really feeling like we have like a community to to sort of belong to in our area after we started playing elsewhere and and you know seeing what they're they're trying to do it definitely feels like we kind of belong there definitely so elsewhere the music venue definitely which is also a record store and a bar um that's in the heart of margate um christ where else do we hang out there's also the ramsgate music halls which is across Cross town from us, but that's that's quite similar. It's a bit more posh, I suppose. It won um it won the best small venue in the UK a couple of years back, um and for good reason. Like yeah, it's, it's quite small, but it's still very very pre professional as well. Yeah, it's it's like it's like being in the recording studio with the band you're watching. Like the acoustics are so amazing in there. It sounds so kind of intimate and everything, but they pull really big bands in there so there's a uk band called idols they've also had jarvis cocker from pulp play there we almost um, played with called... daughters there but that we was on we tour did, yeah yeah daughters played there um yeah one of the best small venues i've been in been to in ages yeah it's yeah that place is definitely close to our hearts um in terms of like non-musical areas in the uk in in uh in kent like why do you need anywhere else <laughs> but a music venue yeah you don't need to go anywhere else just that's a just great answer <laughs> yeah right yeah <laughs> i suppose there's our beaches people come on holiday to margate beach i don't know why 
I yeah, live and I don't go there. Yeah, so back in like the 50s, we used to be a big tourist attraction. Margate and Herne Bay, where I'm originally from, used to be like big kind of tourist attractions in the UK. Everyone used to go there for like holidays and stuff. But ever since kind of airlines became um, accessible back in the 60s or whatever, both these seaside towns have started really sort of depleting and lost loads of money and became a very kind of poor area in Kent to live. Um, but Margate has since seen a bit of a revival. Like it seems to seems to have a bit more of a kind of art community about it. They've just, they well, not just recently, but a while back, they opened up a, an arts gallery called the Turner Centre right on the seafront. And Dreamland, the, the kind of local theme park, has, has reopened and is going pretty strong and yeah it's becoming slowly and gradually kind of more arty so i'd say just like margate margate in general come and visit if you're ever in kent definitely oh and canterbury that's a little bit for that's yeah 20 minutes from well, about half an hour from where where we live and um that's also a very lovely place yeah very kind of historic very old cobbled streets and stuff really old pubs and that but um yeah, Canterbury's a great place to go to as well, definitely. Margate's a bit more grimy, so for me, a yeah. bit more relatable. A bit more charm, <laughs> I'd say. More charm in yeah. Margate. <laughs> when I get back over there, you guys will have to uh, take me to those places. Oh, no, totally, man. Cool. Absolutely, yeah. Hit us up. We'll take you there. Sounds good. Well, I really appreciate you guys coming on, chatting up a little bit. I really appreciate yeah. you supporting me in post oh, promo. I just want to say we're about to release our uh, new album, uh, giant baby snatch it should be hopefully coming out in the next couple of months and uh obviously this would be a good place for us to to it's say funny. giant baby snatch giant baby snatch <laughs> buy it so for the people that are going to watch this later where can they find you guys at um well, half melt brain bank oh, it, it'll be everywhere on spotify but um to to purchase Giant Baby Snatch, uh, you'd have to go to um, <laughs> Half Melt of Brain um, at band, uh, bandcamp.com. Half we're Melt of Brain Records. We're on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok as well. If you search Traps or the Red and yeah. Purple songs, you'll find us. Yeah, we've, we've, we've gone on to TikTok, even though it's a cesspool, but, but, but we're, uh, we're now on there. Sounds good. I hope you guys have a great night and we'll chat soon. Oh, great. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Man. Cheers for having Peace. us. Thank you. <laughs>